Hello and welcome. I am Ben the Best Five, and I'm coming at you with yet more Kerbal Space Program content. Now, this video is not um one of my well, my ones in my playthrough. It's one of my ones which is you know more out there, more real worldy, and I'm in fact recreating a um, replica of the ISS. Now, some of my rockets, like this one here, is a very accurate proton replica. We couldn't get the fairing exactly perfect at first because other things in the Kerbal Space Program aren't exactly within sizable you know, um, ratios to each other, so had to exaggerate the fairing. But this is, in fact, a, a rather accurate um, proton rocket recreation launching the Zarya module into a low inclinated orbit. You also might have noticed that the launch site I'm launching from is actually the uh, Woomerang launch site, not the regular Kerbal Space Center launch site. Uh, this is just because in the real world, the ISS is actually situated at a rather inclinated um, orbit, so because its launch sites are not at the equator. So I decided to, to do a similar sort of thing here to kind of get a realistic um, um, natural inclined orbit like the ISS has. The reason I am doing a video like this is because, well, it hopefully gives me, you know, a video which is more open to fair and, you know, criticism or, um, uh, feedback because that sort of stuff is really important to me. Um, and the last video I did on a similar sort of topic was my, um, Ariane's future video, which was kind of a similar genre, and in the space of two weeks it jumped up to my second uh, most watched video, which gives me an indication that uh, people like that sort of content. So as a result, I'm going to try and throw more content like that into my videos. Plus, you know, this sort of thing is fun, so I figured I might as well make a video. Also, this isn't the whole ISS. I figured I'd split it up so that I could, you know, show detail of every single launch. For example, this is the Zarya module, uh, functional cargo block, which was the first module that, that was launched. Um, I only launched the first five, which, uh, although I did make a mistake while launching the third one. Trust I forgot to include um, PMA three. Um, yeah. And there we go. There's um the first module in orbit. Also, I am sorry if my voice sounds a bit off or whatever. I actually have quite a sore throat, um, so my voice might sound a little bit off. And um, I almost didn't make a video this week because my throat does hurt quite a lot and talking is hurting. But uh, for you guys, the fans, I will endure and I will provide my regular commentary. Anyway, this rocket here is launching the uh, Unity module. As you can see, it's not a shuttle replica. I did actually have a shuttle going, but it, um, but in order to actually launch the uh, module on, an I on a shuttle in a realistic manner, I would actually have required to put a um, Canada arm on the shuttle. I did have a, a space shuttle, you know, that was designed to do that and stuff. However, no matter how many struts or how much oil strutting I did of the, or how many physical struts I put on the Canada arm, on the um, on my shuttle recreation, uh, just the the Canada arm just flipped everywhere, and it actually like went out the sides of the cargo bay of the um, shuttle, which actually caused it it to flip from me there from the aerodynamic forces which you know a big long arm out to side cause. So for the purpose of this this video, since the main focus is actually on the um thing I'm building of the launch vehicles, um, I decided that um it'd be okay if I went for something a little bit simpler and, you know, more controllable like a standard rocket. So they saw a bit of an, an Atlas five oh one recreation. However, I decided to, you know, only make it a, a loose recreation uh, just simply because the real ISS wasn't launched on it. And um, 
if I was going to put you know real love and care into it, and I wanted it to be something that the real you know parts were launched from. So although yeah, which is why you know my uh, my rocket you know had all the right flags for the for the first module and third module it had all the right flags and stuff, and they were positioned correctly and looked really cool. But for this one, I think well yeah, I just didn't feel like putting in so much effort for it because it wasn't quite perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, if you you do want to see me actually build, you know, a shuttle and find a way to get it working and uh, and stuff, then uh, do let me know if you want to see one like that. Then, yeah, I'll I'll really try hard for the next time I make one of these videos. I'll um, yeah, try making it so that it can perform such a mission, but for the United States modules which I launched in this video, it um it just yeah, it didn't seem really feasible. But like I said, I, I am open to suggestions that if you really, really, really do want to see me launch them in an in, in a in an accurate shuffle manner, then then I will. Yes. Also some things like the um um uh P zero, P one and S1 um, infrastructure can't actually fit into the bay of the shuttle on Kerbal Space Program just because the built-in shuttle parts on Kerbal Space Program aren't actually built correctly to proportion. For example, they should use the 5 meter tanks for the external tank, etc, etc, etc. And as a result, the um, cargo bays which are available for them are actually too small in size to, to actually correctly fit the cargo, and even when I was launching, for example, that um, that uh, Unity module there, it was actually uh, when I did have it in my soft shuttle recreation, it was actually rather catastrophic. Anyway, you might have seen the uh, Pizza Hut logo there on my um, on my third launch here, my uh, launch of the Shvedster. Um, module. Uh, pff, uh, true fact, um, when this rocket was actually launched, Pizza Hut paid a million dollars to um, put advertising on the side of the, the rocket during the launch. So and they now have the, the added advantage of having their advertising, you know, on on rockets for on rockets photos and recreations like this one for for the rest of you know history because you know the ISS is a pretty big part of space history so you know so as long as there's space history there will be Pizza Hut logos. Speaking of, just by the way, you know, if anyone is watching out this out there, you know, you know, f for for a small, you know, sponsorship fee I could, you know, slide to some advertising on the side of some my rockets, you know. Anyway, uh that's enough of that. Um yeah. This this module um it's actually one of the ones I built with the highest part count. So I was a little bit concerned about that. Now I could have actually gone these modules were some of the ones I went to to, you know, best detail of. And um like I, I did constantly want to add more and more details, but I wanted to keep my uh part count below two thousand just because I didn't want it to start to become unbearably laggy or unusable and start to cause issues when I got close to the completion of it. So as a result, you know, some of them, some of the modules are more detailed than others, and some of them could, you know, and for example, this one here could have got a lot more detailed. My overall part count is actually around 1,900 parts with about 100 parts leeway, but uh, I decided to leave that leeway in just because, you know, designs change and well, probably quite. Oh, I might notice something that needs adding or whatever, so that's why I just decided to give myself some extra space. As you can see there, those solar panels unfurl rather rapidly and rather erratically, crazily, you know, out of control even. But, um, hey, they, they fold up and can be deployed while inside of a rocket, which I think is pretty cool, just because, you know, I like seeing, seeing uh, nice custom panels and I think those ones are pretty nice, especially since they you know, are the right shape of the ones on the actual ISS because 
yeah, th there's no actual panels that size or shape you know, in KSP. So I actually thought that adding them like this was actually a. It's actually really nice and actually looks really cool on them. I'm actually quite pleased with it. Um, there are a few issues though with them. The um, um, you know strength of those hinges is very very low. So I would like to see uh, maybe some hinges being made a little bit more tougher. And they also don't track the sun, which I mean it's not such of an issue when you know um, my ISS is going to eventually become covered in uh, solar panels facing all sorts of directions so providing you know constant power to the station shouldn't be an issue but yeah they don't track the sun like the real ones do which is kind of an issue you can also see there I docked it I docked the module at a rather rough angle not correctly aligned so I did actually just quickly undock it rotate it a bit then redock it. Also just by the way um, you c might be able to hear some uh, rattling, some jingling noises. That is because my uh, cat mid-recording decided to uh, jump up on my lap and um, ask for cuddle. So that is why you might um, notice some background noises. Also right then while I was talking about her she in fact decided to jump up on my keyboard and, and press the hot key to um, stop the recording which is very helpful of her. I include a photo of her in the description. Anyway this is my launch of my Z1 Trust piece. I forgot to include the um, the second pressurized mating adapter or PMA3. Did I say second? I meant third. I mentioned this earlier, but um, and I also forgot when I launched my P6 truss, and I, I decided to launch five five modules in this video, um, just because um, you know I figured five is a pretty nice round even number. And I'm pretty sure that as soon as the P6 truss was installed, that was actually when the ISS was at a state where um, it was habitable and could be lived in by crewmates and crew members and that's when the uh, first people went up when uh, P6 Trust went up so I decided to finish my build for this video won't be my only video I'm gonna hopefully turn this into a build mini series um, and yeah I decided to finish my um, finish this video there while my ISS was just a state of a ba barely human visitable habitable you know also about my uh, next module I send up the uh, P6 truss. I in fact um, did have to cheat it to orbit. Um, I did in fact develop a launch vehicle capable of launching it. However, because mentioned earlier the um, with the counter arm I tried to make for my shuttles, the um, hinges are very 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 uh, flimsy and don't have any respect for struts it seems. So whenever I tried to launch the module, and trust me, I tried launching it many different times in many different ways. However, every single time I did launch it, the solar panels just flipped out in, you know, a massive five meter long tendril at the side of the fairing, completely ignoring, you know, all laws of physics, except for the fact that they um, hit air resistance and absolutely, completely and utterly destroyed my launch by pulling my craft sideways in directions I didn't want it to which resulted in a total loss of vehicle um, once I quickly just finished docking this um, module here and deorbiting the the, um, the soft um, atlas um, centaur upper stage recreation here I'll um, 
here. Oh, also sorry about the camera angles there. My the camera in this game can sometimes mess up and it just started messing up and changing angles automatically which was rather frustrating especially while I'm trying to dock it at a correct angle. However I was able to still do that despite the game's best efforts to um, stop that. So yeah, after draining the extra mod propellant from the um, upper stage there into the space station because it used a little bit, I um, undocked it just like that and yeah so this is um, my my P6 uh, launch although I am just going to quickly edit in some footage of the launch where I was talking about the struts flying out the edge because well you know I thought it was pretty noteworthy because you know the struts just weren't holding up so after after the um, footage of it um, docking ends there, right, so footage of launch fail here. Right, so now that you've seen this, I in fact had to um, deploy them at 1% speed just because if I deployed the um, um, yeah, here, as you can see, um, I had to set the deploy speed of the um, solar panels at one percent because if it was at going any faster, then they flipped around crazily, and that's not what I wanted. So, as you can see, they are just deploying rather slowly. And here we now have an end screen of a beautifully con well partially constructed ISS. If you like this video then please do leave a like. If you like the ISS leave a comment or leave a like. If you like this kind of real world exploration stuff in my videos then let me know otherwise please do subscribe to keep supporting my content and thank you for watching and have a great day and I hope you don't get my sore throat.